My first job was as a trainee at the European Space Agency. So I've had always been interested in working in space uh, since I was a kid. Um, and especially I was interested in what ESA was doing. So when I graduated from my master's and bachelor's in uh, telecommunications engineering from Spain, and before I moved to Canada to do my master's in aerospace engineering, I decided to do a short program in astronomy and planetary science at the Open University in UK. Um, so the reason is because I was always interested in the technical side, but also in the astronomy and astrophysics uh, side of, of space. So at the time, I saw that ESA had a traineeship program like, related to, to astronomy projects in uh, ESAC, that is the center of ESA in Madrid, which is, by the way, like close to my hometown. So I decided to apply. I was selected and I worked there within the Herschel Space Observatory team. And after my traineeship, I got a short contract with ESA and I worked there and that's how I started my, my career in space. I've been always passionate about space. Uh, so my parents are both scientists and they transmitted me the, the love uh, for science, engineering and learning in general. So as a kid, I had different uh, interests, including our archaeology, but space was also always in my mind. So when it was time to decide what to study at university, I decided to go for engineering, but always with uh, the idea of working uh, in space in, in a future. And yeah, so I think it's, uh, space is really exciting. I cannot find another more exciting field. As you know, space is part of our life, it improves life on Earth. Uh, it's a sector that pushes the boundaries of innovation, knowledge, fosters collaboration, competition, and combines all different disciplines. I think it's a combination of different factors. So first of all, I consider myself very fortunate for being working in a place with great professionals, right? Where my managers and directors had confidence of my capabilities, right? Uh, had uh, the confidence of me taking new responsibilities, managing new, new projects, new opportunities. And on the other hand, I've been always very uh, determined person to expand my skills, my expertise, and I've been always open to new opportunities, even if they are out of my comfort zone. So basically when you know, opportunities came, I took them, I dedicated the necessary time, effort, and made sure we succeed. And this in turn generated new, new opportunities. That's a good question. Actually, uh, I think I would remind myself two things that I always tell students. Uh, so the first thing is that it is normal to not know everything, right? So you keep always learning new skills, uh, new topics, you keep always evolving as a professional and, and as an individual. Um, and there will be always people who have a greater expertise than you in a certain topic, and that's great, you know, because those people can become part of your team, your network, and you can learn a lot from them. So right at the beginning, it's important to not get intimidated, right? Ask questions and trying to learn as much as possible from others. And the second thing is uh, being patient. So writing your own story takes time. And the important thing is to appreciate all the steps, you know, along the way, along that story, even when challenges arise. So yeah, I had the opportunity to meet great people, right, through my career, people who had advised me, guided me, and mentored me. So including at uh, my current workplace at Urban Salt. Uh, so yeah, I consider myself lucky to be working in a place where you know my managers and directors take the time to answer any question that I may have, and have guided me and advised me as uh, as I needed, right? And I'm trying to do the same thing with the new uh, junior employees in in the company. 
and at side work actually I'm also trying to find new ways uh, opportunities you know to get involved to students to mentor to talk to them about my experience and I think it's very important especially when you realize of how much you gain from the support from others so I had that opportunity and I would like to give that opportunity to others too and uh, yeah and I should say it's also a very rewarding feeling right when you see that you can have a positive impact uh, on others. So I remember actually on a few occasions right after I went to talk to students uh, and share my experience uh, and I chat with them, I received some messages saying, oh, thank you for the advice or, you know, your presentation. It really encouraged me, you know, to try to work in space or apply to this program or do the other thing. So it's, and it's actually a very nice feeling when you see that, you know, you can help people to find their path. I've learned several things, right? But I think I would say uh, three main things. The first thing is that uh, it's important to have passion for what you do and follow your instinct. So I consider myself extremely lucky to be working in something that I love, that is space. So I remember when I finished my, at university in, back uh, in Spain and it was time to, to find my first job, right, I was interested in the space, but maybe the space opportunities were more limited. So I had the chance, I was offered uh, good opportunities, but in other sectors, right? But my instinct was telling me that that's not really what I wanna do, right? And I remember at the time, my father told me, okay, Natalia, if you feel that that's not for you, if you really wanna do space, keep trying, right? So I did that. So I followed that advice, I followed my instinct, and time after, right, I got the traineeship at ESA, and then is how I started my, my career in space. The second thing that I learned is that uh, failure happens, and that's part of life. Uh, many times, if not most of the times, is because of reasons that you cannot even control, but the important thing is how you face it. So when you fall down, you stand up, and you keep going. That's what you do. And the third thing, uh, it's always to keep learning. So it's important to always keep evolving as a professional, as an individual, and be open to new opportunities. What I find uh, the most exciting thing is the renewed interest in space exploration. So most agencies worldwide seem to converge now on the importance of establishing a sustainable presence on and around the moon in the next decade, in the 2020s, as a pathway to manned missions to Mars afterwards. But it is, what is truly interesting is to see how the model to conduct space exploration have been evolving with time, right? So if you think about like traditionally, uh, space exploration has been driven by a limited number of players, mainly governments, but now this is changing, right, as we see more and more players involved. So moving forward, we are entering in what we consider a new area, era in space exploration, right, uh, driven by both competition and collaboration and also joined by the private sector. So now it's not only governments, it's also, you know, private companies that seek to exploit that commercial potential uh, of the space exploration.